All right, today we'll be looking at Eyeliner's Wind Chimes. Uh, this is another another piece based on a band in the box project uh, where I've generated chord progression and accompaniment and everything else for a general MIDI file that been, that's been imported into Nuendo. So all the stuff at the right side is the kind of sketch material, which isn't mapped correctly and sounds kind of weird, but um, I think it's an R&B template based on the, this um, this kind of uh, beat. It's a lot of sort of meandering chords out of Band in a Box 2008, exported into Nuendo and then sort of chopped up to try to figure out how the piece is going to work, work out. Um, so there's the original original MIDI that came out of it. I wonder if there's the original. No, there is no. I don't have the um, the band in a box generated song title out of that. Band in a box likes to generate um, randomly generate song titles for you when you come up with um, chord progressions in it. Anyway. So we basically took a snippet of that. Um, this is working ahead back left. So this is newer material based off this original MIDI file. So there's that B section. It might even be based on the same chord progression. Oh, that's cute. Didn't make the cut, but this kind of steel drum. A lot of the things that didn't make the cut are just straight sort of like scale runs. Don't like it. Dotted eighth notes, kind of bop, 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 bop. Um, seems a little too obvious and just, yeah, but pretty cute. The whole thing's pretty cute. Actually, the whole thing is uh, kind of connotes to me this uh, sort of Hayao Miyazaki, uh, My Neighbor Totoro kind of um, vibe, and I always thought that writing it didn't hear, didn't see the movie or hear the soundtrack for for five years, heard it again, and I was like, I did put, I did actually successfully put a bit of that kind of um, family sort of anime film um, cute sort of sense into it. So the the initial sketch um, compositionally ends up pretty pretty close in the in the final version. So this one's trying to sound a lot like a kind of keyboard demo type uh, straight beats, nothing too sophisticated uh, rhythmically or sort of showy, uh, and has should have that kind of mediality of a kind of a loop. Um, Yeah, this song comes after quite a lot of busy stuff. Um, Showbiz is quite busy, Venetian Blind super busy, and then Chit Chats afterwards is super busy, so this is kind of trying to be a bit more predictable, a bit more laid back. Um, I love this um, triangle-y, symbol -y, uh, backing from Hellion 1. So everything's kind of driven in the sections driven by this kind of percussion and the uh, the doubling up of the bass we've got a synth bass and then uh, a high pass version of slap bass from slap and thumb this EQ curve is way too drastic for what I was doing with what I would be doing these days I'd never do a 20 DB cut at 100 Hertz I would I would I would be more likely to cut that back and turn it down a bit more. It just means that the, the mix is a little bit more full and things sort of intermodulating a little bit more with the overtones and the fundamentals, but it's nice in this. It's got a kind of scoopy sound to it that you've got the low bass and then this kind of high, like high pass sort of slap bass. Had to put slap bass in because the prescription for the album is that there's slap bass in every track. And 
this one's also got the, the, the cutest sets of patch names it's got. You've got Candle. It's kind of glassy pad sound. Then Moon Knight. So that's actually a slap bass. Slap bass with gamelan and music box. Very Japanese sounding to me. And of course the Korg M1 is a Japanese synthesizer. Um, Caribbean steel drums, gotta love them. That's actually a program, not the, it says film score, but the, the combi is a film, is, was a film score, but then I just replaced it with the program of Caribbean, so. Then old East and West. It's kind of watery bell sound. And then this bit, um, this kind of stacking of the melody on these pad, pad um, instruments it reminds me a little bit of uh, like Nobuo Uematsu, like Final Fantasy VII, especially this part is very like Japanese role playing game. Yeah, this kind of like uh, the way that uh, Japanese pop, like we particularly use the kind of this impressionistic harmony seventh sort of thing, that there are like frequently a lot of the melody lines are not that showy, but just sort of genius ways of sort of worming the um, the melody around the harmony. Uh, that was what I was sort of trying to go for. Um, well, no, in no way compare myself to any of these Japanese musicians, um, but. Kind of yeah, the sort of sort of Debussy um, voicing on sort of oh these are cow horn um, on these sort of cheap sounding sounds. I love it. Also, there's something uh, in there with this. Um, it's kind of a dotted quarter note on the. Um, it's like a it's like a hit. Where are we? This one. Yeah, this 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 hit has a kind of um, a dotted quarter note to it that I really I really love. There's no shuffle on it, but it sounds shuffly. There's no swing or shuffle or any, of any kind on the. It's all straight on the beat, but this. Um, this kind of woodblock uh, rim shot type sample can pushes the pushes the rhythm along. A very busy drum element that I wouldn't normally put in, but the rest of the the rest of the tune is kind of um, pretty simple. Sort of enough enough space for it to sort of breathe. See, so it's kind of a come down after the sort of hectic. Um, hectic last couple of tracks, and then yeah, it does get a little hectic later on, so we're kind of giving the listener a little pause this is kind of like visiting Tom Bombadil's house or it's kind of you know this kind of a hero's journey sort of um, gift part and it does sound to me like a sort of a moment frozen in time rather than watching or being involved in a situation where something is happening it's more of a kind of a vignette it's more of a kind of frozen image um, yeah, or like credits or a sort of a montage where nothing particular happens. Impressionist music, that kind of thing. That's the mise en scene. Um, and then it goes straight into a little fade out. 
after the last appearance of the main melody. And this uh, east and west patch has that um, same dotted quarter note from the the drum hit that I was mentioning before. This wherever it is, this. So the fade is done in the master. Um, I generally export more than I need to and then just fade with respect to the timing of the next track. Sometimes you need a longer fade if the next song's faster, sometimes you need a shorter fade if it just depends. So giving oneself enough lead out to, to fade it out in the master. And um, also you don't want to master anything that's been faded out because you'll you'll distort all your dynamic uh, your gain reduction and stuff like that. So yeah, that's cute old little old wind chimes. Oh, of course, the title. Right, I'm back. The title, the, all that that kind of like impressionist music, or like this kind of uh, imagery of like a frozen nature scene, or this kind of um, pastoral. That's wind chimes. Um, the idea is that the the main uh, the main melody is kind of this little snippet that you keep hearing it's very wind chimesy um i love wind chimes this kind of these sort of fleeting little snippets of melody coming in and out also chimey so it couldn't be anything else other than wind chimes Yeah, pretty simple song, not much else to say. Um, it's wind chimes. <laughs> 